So we want to talk about roller chain. Actually, drive chain is what you look at because uh, drive chain is different. But this is a standard roller chain here. If you were making a small, very small trommel, this might be what you would use. Um, usually, on a trommel, you're going to use bigger, bigger chain. And the chain sizes for your normal roller chain is sized according to the eighths of an inch in the pitch. So this right here, from pin to pin, is three quarters of an inch. And the easiest way to measure that is not trying to guess the center, but see where I line up the two inch on one pin and the three quarter lines up on the other pin? So, and I could, could line up the one or just, you can't really line up the hook that well. It gets in your way, so you're better off to, we could go down here and pretend like it was a one again. We could go at the 10 for the zero, and then you see the three quarter on the start of the next pin. So that's three quarters of an inch in between them. So three quarters, if you convert it into eighths of an inch, is six eighths. The number of this chain by US industry standard is a 60. If you have a 40, it is four eighths. Uh, there are a few weird ones, like um, there's a 21, which is a light duty. There's a 45, there's a 41. There's a few of them that are a little different than the standard pattern. And then there's also heavier chains with heavier uh, side links. And there's some extreme duty ones. One of the things that they, people like to do with trommels, which is a total mistake, is they will use a dozer chain because a dozer has a chain in the sprockets and it's built the way it is so that it will hold up a long time in dirt and rock. Don't put dirt and rock on your, on your sprocket on your, for your trommel. Don't do that in the first place. So there's, now there's no advantage to having that hardness of a chain, hard links and such. But there's a big disadvantage in it from where? Because it doesn't have a roller on each tooth to go forward into the sprocket. That roller reduces a lot of the wear on your sprocket. It doesn't matter that much on the dozer. Everything's wearing out, running in dirt anyway. But you wear your sprocket out a lot quicker, your small one, your big one, both on a trommel for no reason. And your flexing inside of the tracks is just more than what it normally does. It, they don't work well. You can buy bigger chains that are roller chains, and that is a better choice if you're building a trommel. Um, now, talking about roller chains, um, let's go out here and see if we can find, somebody put rain out here. Let's see if we can find, Call back. come on, come on, come on. Did you see it? Come on, kiddo, did you see it? Did you see it? No, you didn't. <clears throat> uh, along with roller chain, in the early days there was, uh, there's link chain, which is also a drive chain. That's where the link belt chain company, that's their name comes from. Their first thing that really got them going is link chain. You see it on manure spreaders. You see it uh, occasionally. Ah, I know where I got some. This is not the right. This is the one. Yeah, I was trying to think. I knew I had some link chain. This is from our antique pedal lathe. It has link chain on it. Oh, I am in the wrong. Huh, where did I get that wrong? I don't know where I keep my toys. Yes. This is link ch style drive chain right here. They're just individual links that are bent where they fit together and you get them to the right point and you can slide them apart. They're just individual links. They're not, a, they don't need a master link or anything. Some of them have a bend to them and this one probably did at first, a little bend on each side to keep them together that you have to straighten out some, but uh, 
I don't want to take it all apart, but anyway, that's basically what it does, and it, it drives. And the sprocket for this is that's the flat belt. Well, you can see there's, you know, I've got one on there yet. This was the second one I bought. You can see it on the sprocket. They're shaped a little bit different than the uh, roller chains. Right down in there. They still use them for a few things, but it's not a real common uh, type of chain. It tends to wear out quicker than the others. Uh, like I say, manure spreaders on the farms was the last place that I know that it was used a lot. Another chain that you will see, which is also early link belt roller chains, um, were different pitch than what we use today. And I don't know if link belt or, or I don't know if both systems came up at the same time and one died out. But there is a different U.S. series of roller chain. And yeah, I have some of it here. And normally, you'll be alerted that it's different because it's all this style with every link being what would normally be considered a half link where they bend in. So when you see that, the other thing that you will notice is the pins are D-shaped. If you look over here, the uh, pins for the connectors, the, the pin is cut off. So it's, it's, and this will have a different pitch, different width. It doesn't fit the standard roller chains. And while this stuff here is old and crusty and stuck, I still save it since you can't get it anymore. And instead of having to make that, if somebody needs one or two little pieces, you'll see these a lot of times for old dragline drives out of the 20s. And instead of having to change everything, if I could make somebody's day by saying, hey, I have a piece and let them oil it and beat it apart. And I just, uh, we try and save a few things like that just to help somebody out. <coughs> now we'll get into roller chain a little bit more. As we get back to the shop, there's a lot of little parts to roller chain, and there's those ones are pretty much all the same pieces. As you can see, it goes in, one goes inside of the other. But a standard chain today, because that's not real strong with those bent straps. As you pull on it, that strap's going to want to straighten out, and it'll be fighting itself a little bit. While they do make half links that are similar to that, for the most part, your chains that you use today are using master links and straight sides, so you don't have a piece that's bending. And we'll bring out our master link, half link drawer and show some of what's going on there. <coughs> on trommels, I have used a lot of them 160 pitch because it's a very common, easy to get chain. I've also used 240 pitch. Uh, we had some 300, one that I didn't build, but we were around it. I don't know what the biggest they make. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the biggest number is. But uh, the 160 is pretty good for a medium-duty trommel around six foot. If you're going to use it hard, it would be better to go a little bit bigger. Um, yeah, it's going to depend on how much how much you're using it. Okay, ground hose files. I don't think this is the right one, but might be. Chain link repair. Yep. Okay, there we go. That's the one we want to look at. So, here is a master link, and there's different types of these, uh, in fact, actually, that's number 80, that other chain is 60, why have I got only 80, I know I needed some 80, it's like there's a bunch of this out of this uh, drawer, and there's a 50. Hmm. This is a uh, well it's a full full link 
So a link is considered more than just, or is it a one and a half links? So now the master would go in there. No, it adds in a, it adds in a full link to where you're at. This would just be taking the place, or this one would just be taking the place of the roller that you would take out on the other chain. They make things like, they make these different pieces so you can have different lengths of your chain. And this chain here specifically we ordered for the customer so that it was all cotter pin, which is not real common, but you can get it. You have to look sometimes. Uh, the cotter pin chain, you think that, because they make cotter pin master links, and that was what he was originally wanting. And what I was looking for was cotter pin style master links because <coughs> they stay in better. While you can break the master pin, um, and here, that's interesting. I just said that one was the D on that one style chain. Apparently, on this half link here, they have a D on there too. Huh, I didn't realize that. And this is two half links together, is what this is. But a full link is, it would be this piece with two rollers plus the two side pieces. So that would be a full link. It actually does not include the next roller. So you would have a full link, everything to hook a, a chain together with standard pieces would be a link. A master link has no rollers at all. It's just strictly a master. These ones have got a little spring clip commonly that you pry it a little bit, it comes loose, and then this backup piece goes in there. The uh, ones with cotter pins, it's just a backup piece. Now, when you get a fully cottered chain like this, while you can take it apart, these pins are a little tight. They're still pressed in there. They're pressed in tighter than it would be on a master link. So even though it's all capable of being taken apart, they're not actually all master links. Actual master links are made looser so that it slides together nice and easy. Where these right here, you can take them apart, you can use it as a master link, but you're gonna have to pound on it a little bit. It's gonna be hard to take apart. It doesn't move as easy. Now, if we were to say you wanna change the length of this chain, <clears throat> you come in here and you remove this piece here. We remove that piece and then we can hook. Let's just, here's our other end of our chain. Yeah, that's a nuisance, happened. A little bit of, s would be a lot easier with old chain. Old chain, you can just flop it all around. Okay, we have two pieces there. They each have a roller on it. You could put a master link between them. But as you look at this, if we want to change size in this, we can't just come back one roller because this is the wider, larger part, the same as the master link. So if we were going to cut this, we would have to grind this whole plate off here and we would lose those two rollers and this pin through here. That's what you'd lose as a full link before you could connect this with a master again. That's why we have these half links. Because <clears throat> of this half link, if we want to make this just a little bit longer, we could directly, uh, well, imagine that we've just got the half link only. So we could connect this directly to there and then put a master in here, which would mean we only add one roller. So we might take two out and add one, or we might add one where if you're adding in a full link, you're gonna add in two rollers. And it, it's one of those things gives you some more options. I don't know why I don't have more pieces in there. I'm thinking there might be a second drawer that's for uh, roller chain. But uh, drive chain, um, the way it's sized, there's standard proportions for the width, thickness of the side plates. Like I say, the heavier stuff is, uh, a lot of times they'll be like heavy, would be, this is a number 60, it would be a 60H for a heavier one. Then, as of the last 40 years, you have been able to buy some higher alloy chains that are stronger than what the normal ratings are. 
And that's just a brand specific thing. The ones that uh, specialize in that the most is Sugami. That's a Japanese company. And that's normally where people go to, not trying to, you know, go by definite brands. Uh, Morris is a US company. Morris and Diamond are real common US ones for chain. But usually when you're looking to push your chain because it's been failing, you want something more than standard, they go to the Japanese made uh, Sugami chain. And I believe Sugami makes a lower grade chain too, so don't just buy Sugami and say that's it. Check and make sure it is their special grade chain if you need a special grade chain. You'll see that around uh, drilling rigs a lot where they're uh, just pulling on stuff really hard. 